First of all, uh, as the RSVP numbers piled up, we became more and more excited. We've got so many folks here tonight that come from uh, recent grads, uh, current students, all the way to some of our very original uh, folks. So we are excited about all of you being here tonight. We also have uh, a number of folks joining us online because we are streaming uh, all the presentations live. And we'll have an opportunity to actually check in with some of those folks in the atrium later. But we definitely want to say hello and welcome to all of our online folks in addition. Uh, so on my right-hand side here, some of you might have noticed, we've got a uh, screen up. And it's actually a, a Twitter screen. We've got tweets going on. We uh, have a lot of Twitter enthusiasts in MSLOC, um, n most notably Keely Sorakti and Jeff Merrill. Yay! <laughs> so let me just take a minute to describe the agenda. So we are very excited tonight to have uh, both uh, the Dean of the School of Education, Dr. Penelope Peterson, to talk with us for a few minutes, as well as the original MSLSC director, Dr. Jean Eggman. So we're going to get to hear from them. Then we are going to have our TEDish talks. So we have five wonderful alums who are going to spend five minutes each talking about something that they know a lot about and are very passionate. Then we're going to bookend these presentations with our current MSLSC director, Kimberly Scott. Then we're very excited because Megan Redfern, newly minted MSLOC graduate, has brought her improv troupe and, uh, called Disjuncture. Is that right? Disjuncture? And they are going to be up front here playing with us for uh, about 30 minutes. And then we'll all adjourn and we'll go to the atrium where we've got food and drink, lots of activities. The Catalyst Ranch, ranch hands have designed a lot of fun things for all of you to get engaged with. And then, as I mentioned before, that's when the huggies and the hello and great to see you can all happen there in the atrium as well. So, um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started with our celebration of MSLOC's 10th anniversary. Well, it's uh, very fitting that our next speaker is Dr. Jeannie Eggman because she was that person that went up to the second floor and pitched the idea for MSLOC to Penelope. Um, she, um, she had this idea to combine the disciplines of learning, organizational change, and knowledge management into a very unique program, which, by the way, is still unique. There's nobody else out there who is like us, which our prospects and our new students tell us all the time. Um, but the idea was to equip people with the knowledge and skills they needed to be able to go out and, and positively change the, the organizations and the societies in which they lived and worked. So with the help of Allie Niederkorn, who can't uh, be with us tonight, I think Jeannie's going to talk a little bit about what she might be doing, Allie Niederkorn and Mark Smithivis, who, who may be online with us tonight. Keely, have you seen him pop up? Mark Smithivis? No? Anyway, they got the doors open in the fall of 2001. And, uh, and we'll uh, have a chance to acknowledge somebody who was actually in that class um, tonight as well. So let me tell you a little bit about Jeannie. She is currently the executive director of the Ford Center for Global Citizenship Network within the Kellogg School. She's president of Third Angle, a consultancy she founded about 10 years ago, or at least more than 10 years. I know it was in place when I came. Jeannie has her EDD and her master's from University of Illinois in the areas of management and cognition. So when I Googled Jeannie just to sort of see, you know, how people were talking about her, what, what, was, uh, what she had been up to in the last seven years, here are some of the words that just came up over and over again. Synthesis, interdependency, interdisciplinary, design, innovation, networks, invention, connection. So the MSLOCers are in this room who don't know Jeannie won't be surprised at all to understand why she was the founder of MSLOC. She also co-authored a book. Uh, I remember when I was actually working with her, I remember when all this was happening, The Prepared Mind of a Leader, Eight Skills Leaders Used to Innovate, Make Decisions, and Solve Problems in 2005. So I'm actually personally grateful to Jeannie because uh, she hired me <laughs> and enabled me to start uh, and be involved with this, this great uh, th that, that great start that we are actually here celebrating tonight. So with that, join me in welcoming Jeannie, and we're going to catch up with her on what she's been doing for the last seven years. Great 
seeing old friends and making new friends. And uh, special thanks to Penelope. I think it was more like Penelope called me up to the second floor. And she had this idea for a master's in LOC. We co-constructed it. We co-constructed it. That's right. And to that end, uh, and along the lines of pioneers, uh, Terry asked me to talk about, I said, what do you want me to talk about? She said, talk about entrepreneurship. That's always what you do is entrepreneurship and what that has to do with MSLOC. So I'll spend five, seven minutes tonight talking about that. Just to build on what Terry said, greetings from Allie Niederkorn, from those of you who know Allie. She took off to uh, Africa yesterday for the week. So she can't be here tonight, but she really misses um, being here and wishes the best for all of you. So um, there, I think there's a clicker somewhere. Oh, here it is. OK. This one. So, so define your terms, right? So, at, uh, so Terry said, talk about entrepreneurship. So I said, what is entrepreneurship? I made this up yesterday afternoon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, to me, it's all about creating something new. It's uh, creating an attractor that's going to attract money, people, sales. That, create something that people will flock to. Um, and you do so by building on the old, by knitting together, translating, weaving together some things that are already there. When it's entrepreneurship compared to entrepreneurship, it has the added bonus and challenge of being within an institution already. So you can't defy what's core to the organization you're in. But how do you knit what's there into something new and valuable for society? And that's typically what we do, what our MO is. And as a matter of fact, um, someone who applied once for a professor's job here at, at School of Education and Social Policy told me, Jeannie, you're an academic entrepreneur. That's what you do. And I think that was probably the best description I was ever given of myself. I'm like, thanks, I'm going to keep that. And just a little bit of history, there was before the MSLOC, there is the LOC undergraduate program. You know, this is such a backwards deal. Usually you don't start with undergraduate and work up. Um, but, but we did. It worked out. It was bringing, I'll tell you that story in a second. The MSLOC, then I was in the Complexity Institute for a while, which is a university-wide institute for complexity science, and now the Ford Center for Global Citizenship. And as uh, Terry mentioned, I also have my own consulting firm, Third Angle. And that idea of third angle, not one way or another way, it's a third angle that synthesizes and brings things together. Um, we're probably not going to have time for me to talk about my clients, but I have to tell you my three clients right now, and one of them, you might have to pick Penelope off, off the floor with a sponge. So let me ask you this question. What do ExxonMobil, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and Regina Dominican Catholic High School for Girls have in common? They all want to do something new. And um, they all have a lot in common, actually. And why I'm joking with Penelope, when I was here in the school, everybody would say, Jeannie, work with schools. And I'm like, no, 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 talk to the hand. I don't work with schools. Jeannie, come on, work with educational institutions. No, no, I don't. Right now, my busiest client is this Catholic girls' school up in Wilmette um, who was looking to re-niche herself and become entrepreneurial. So it's a school about preparing women for global leadership. And I can tell you more about that offline. But it's a really, really cool place. And it's great to, to work there and, and help that cause. So how did we entrepreneur, if you will, MSLOC? So we have to go back. This is, now, this is sense making, right? This is my memory of the story. For those of you who were there, jump right in. But what we did was, before this term was popular from Bill Gates, rigor, relevance, and relationships, we were back um, at a time when the School of Education and Social Policy had an undergraduate program called Organizational Studies that wasn't known as being the most rigorous thing on the planet. But we had this fairly new um, PhD program, Learning Sciences, that was known as being very innovative and very rigorous. And again, unlike most schools, the faculty asked for an undergraduate program. Now, usually faculty run the other way, frankly, when you say undergraduate program. Our faculty asked for that. And there was already a cognitive science program in 
um, arts and sciences. So I had the idea of, you know, think entrepreneur again, knitting things together. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's take cognitive science and learning sciences and what organizational studies slash organizational behavior is supposed to be, and let's put them together in a creative way. Because we're in the knowledge economy right now, but nobody knows how to do it. And when you're in the knowledge economy, you need learning like you've never needed it before, and you need to understand the context that learning ha happens in organizations and how to weave those together. So we put them together, and voila, we created um, an undergraduate program that was hugely successful. Lots of folks entered in. Um, they got great jobs, reputations. They were good learners, high achievers. Actually, I have one of them now as my practicum student on the Regina Project, and he is terrific as always. So this was going great guns, and Penelope then brought the idea, do you think we could do this at the graduate level? And that's where we talked about a center and a, and a, a master's program. Remember, it was about 2001. So centers and being creative around 2001 in business wasn't the best time to start something new. But master's programs were. So as she said, we kind of co-constructed this idea of the MSLOC. And given that it was a master's program, and given sort of our, our still our uh, foundations of wanting to be rigorous, relevant, and relational, um, I thought, what are the three areas in a knowledge economy that people are going to need to know? What's the world crying for in terms of better use of it? It seemed to come from people I talked to out in the world. Strategic change. How, we're always changing. How do we be strategic about it? It requires learning, changing the way you think, changing the way you do, both in the individual and collective level, and then the structures that carry all that information and knowledge that gets created as knowledge management. So that is what I kind of call the three pillars of the program. So we put it together, and you know, my typical MO is to start something new. And then it's a different kind of, it, it, an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur is usually one kind of person. And then when you want to scale it, it's generally another kind of person. So um, thank God for Kimberly then coming in and the staff that we brought together. And look at you now. You've innovated. You've really grown to this terrific program. And I'm so proud of you. When I um, got the invitation, to say it was the 10-year anniversary. I'm like, 10 years? Where did that go? How did that happen? But I'm so pleased to say that what we built in, in terms of the foundation is still there and getting more and more innovative. So that's the aha. Now, I'll finish with a little geek part. When I'm with my clients, I always ask permission to ask to be geeky. And I don't think I have to ask your permission, right? Because that's what you're here for. So in my mind, being an entrepreneur is all about the core of LOC. It's all about schema theory meets network theory. Schema theory is like my favorite thing in the world. And it's about build, building something new on something old. And if you think about organizations as sort of collective schemas, they have these different or networks too, networks of knowledge, different ways of thinking, that if you knit those together in a really creative way to answer a problem that you're trying to solve, voila, you've got something new. And that's how our minds work, I think, when we're learning something new in our schema. We're constructing new things um, on top of something old or recombining things in a way to answer a problem or solve a question. And I think what it takes to be really good at that in a social sense is to be a really good network broker and hub. Um, I'm not a networker in the schmoo sense, but I'm a networker in I know a lot of different people who know and do a lot of different things. Probably. If you want to meet the best networker in the room I've ever met, well, there's two of them. They're sitting right there, the two beginning stars of the LOC program, Andrea Spooch and Sandy Schwann. Andrea was the first student, and Sandy was the first graduate. So we should give a round of applause. <laughs> anyway, my thought is, um, boy, if you don't learn schema theory in MSLOC, you should and really leverage the heck out of it in the same way about networks. How do you bring these diverse networks of thought, people, places, things together and build on something new? So, you know, I'm glad that I could be part and I feel humbled about sort of setting the foundation and I'm just thrilled to see where it's going to go next. So thank you. Wrapping up our presentations today, we are going to hear from our uh, director of MSLOC, Dr. Kimberly Scott. And uh, when I was thinking about introducing Kimberly, I was thinking, well, you know, I can tell you all the serious stuff about Kimberly, like 
for example, she has her PhD in organizational behavior from the uh, Ohio State University. She became the director in 2005 after spending some time as a researcher at Hewitt and then going on as an OD manager at Wrigley. I could tell you she's an assistant professor uh, at SESPE currently, and she just published a book chapter that's titled The Eight P's of Healthy Workplace Design. I could tell you all that serious stuff, but what I'd much rather tell you about Kimberly Scott is that she was a drum major when she was at the University of Cincinnati. She married her childhood sweetheart. She's a Monty Python fan. <laughs> she has an embarrassingly avid interest in YouTube videos like that happy hands dancing guy <laughs> and, and the honey badger. So um, she, <laughs> yeah, it's true. But she's also a wickedly skillful course designer. Uh, and she has recruited a bench of instructors who uh, I think any program in our field would be hard, uh, hard pressed to match in terms of their knowledge and their dedication and their expertise in the classroom. Kimberly is a really unique blend of down in the details, analytical, dealing with, uh, dealing with numbers and research. Um, can I get an amen from anybody who's been her capstone advisor? <laughs> but she also, <laughs> But she, she also is a very inventive and uh, strategic visionary. You usually don't see those two things hand in hand, but that's definitely the case. <laughs> All right. So, um, so at any rate, a lot of times with Kimberly, she'll say something, and I think she's like joking, or she doesn't really mean it, and then I find myself two weeks later neck deep in implementing some new innovative idea. So I just am warning you all, if the trajectory of innovation that's been in MSLSE continues, we're going to be having a classroom on a rooftop garden on top of Annenberg Hall one of these days. <laughs> so with that... I'd like to present to you Dr. Kimberly Scott. Thank oh, wow. Thank you. Well, before you sit down, um, I know Terry's going to acknowledge everyone who played a role in this evening, um, but I don't know who's acknowledging Terry. So, Terry, come back up here. This evening, really, the celebration would not be possible without Terry. Her tireless work effort, anybody who knows uh, what these events are like and pulling them together knows how hard it was. So. Um, thank you so much. Let's show our appreciation to Terry. Thank you. It's such a privilege to be here with you tonight. Um, and just to see everyone who's been a part of MSLOC, uh, it really is, is truly amazing for me. And my assignment tonight was to give a short talk about our theme, Future Focus, and MSLOC. And I decided to pursue that by trying to uh, envision what that might be like and come up with some images to start to collect those. And what ended up happening is I, I found myself with the final product that looked an awful lot like this exercise that we used in, yeah, let's come see some heads <laughs> nodding. Uh, back in 2006, we used it a couple other times, 2007, maybe even 2008, for our MSLOC retreat where we sent students into the room and said, okay, it's filled with pictures, go in and find one that best represents your image for community. And this is a, a photograph of, of what they actually came up with in 2006. Uh, if you can't make some of these out, we have some pyramids, uh, Golden Gate Bridge, colored pencils, dogs and cats hugging each other. It's making me very happy right now. I'm thinking bunnies, bunnies, bunnies. Um, we've got two seesaw caution signs. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to imagine that a group of people with these images could ever coalesce uh, and, and help shape the kind of community that we, hear, we enjoy now here in MSLSC. But they did, and they came together quite well. And as you can already see from this one example, it was really hard for me to be future-focused without thinking about the past. And uh, that actually, I thought that was an, ex an interesting experience. So, um, I did a little bit of research. I went on EBSCO and found an article, not typical of me at all, um, 
snooped around a bit and actually found that research from psychology and cognitive neuroscience has amassed some evidence that thinking about the past, remembering things in the past, and anticipating the future involve very closely related mental processes. And I know some of you are, are waiting for this word, so here it goes. It all comes back to schema, right? Am I right? It always comes back to schema. So there you have it. I'm sure I'm giving Megan all sorts of material to use now on me. Um, but it does. And so I felt justified to begin my future fo focus message with a little bit of trip, a trip down past. And so for our purposes tonight, I'm going to begin our history of the past at 2002. And we know, thanks to uh, what Jeannie was presenting earlier, the history of MSLOC goes much farther back than that. But for our purposes in 2002, um, I didn't even know MSLOC existed at that point in time. I, in fact, didn't even really know School of Education and Social Policy existed. I was aware of Northwestern University, but uh, quite frankly, that really wasn't on my mind at the time. Uh, with my second son, Liam, having just been born, and his older brother, Jack, keeping things real as usual, uh, always on our toes, I can imagine just a few blocks away from here, the flurry of activity, Jeannie and Allie and Mark, trying to get this fledgling program up and running, uh, probably as frantic as I was to keep up with my growing family. But uh, there we were, and then we all have this experience. I've, I've heard it mentioned uh, this evening already. And then time flies, right? We don't know where it goes, but it does. And when you think about all of those amazing innovations and new products and launches that happened over the last 10 years, things that we take for granted today, it truly is amazing. And some of these things we might not have even paid any attention to when they first came out. Maybe we still haven't paid much attention to them. Maybe we're just starting to get to know how to use those. Um, and others, perhaps we paid a little bit too much attention to them. <laughs> Apparently giving our colleagues the wrong impression about what we like to do in our spare time. Actually, I took a screenshot of this um, a couple days ago. I, I remembered my password eventually and logged in. And uh, my video suggestions were exploration of the Fourier coefficient applet and Sesame, Sesame Street duty rubber duck. So I figure they probably, with their data collection, they have a pretty good peg on, on, on who I am. Uh, Terry kind of revealed that already. So um, we have new sources for movie clips in our classes, new material to use, and easier ways to find and create uh, those video clips. Things that we thought were true and permanent and would always be true and permanent were found not to be so true anymore, including our personal beliefs that there was no way we would remember the names of those other people who showed up with me at MSLOC retreat by the end of the weekend. That was not going to happen, but we did. And we, we changed those beliefs. And we found new ways to connect with people to keep up with what they were doing. Um, those little small introductions that happen, you know, those things that end up changing our lives and the way we do things, like my introduction, uh, my introduction to Jeannie, facilitated by a corporate training and development alumna, actually. She introduced the two of us, and who knew that that was going to change the trajectory of my career. But these small introductions suddenly end up changing our lives in ways that we never even imagined, including our use of the MSLOC wiki. <laughs> and yes, Robin, what doesn't kill you, if it doesn't kill you in MSLOC 421, I'm happy to report we haven't lost anyone to a wiki yet. It does make you stronger, so we can have a turn at you again in capstone, right? But it, uh, 2008 was actually one of those years where I had a hard time finding a new product launch, a new technology launch. And then I came across this article that actually 69% of their, their people that they were surveying had a hard time coming up with that too. The highest number of any year they had been doing this research. But it turns out we had a lot, a lot of other things on our mind during that time, other major life-changing events now. We look back in our history. Um, we had the unveiling of our MSLOC Alternative Schedule Program, our new innovation for 2009, and uh, new technology that was helping us do that more and more every year that came along, new things that we had to adopt and adapt to, new ways to learn, new hybrid cars to go with our hybrid courses. And 
remember.com, new ways for us to gather these memories and share our knowledge and what we know. And at this point in time, when I'm gathering these images, I put these two pictures next to each other. And I realized that um, it was probably just as ridiculous for me to stand up here and tell you what Liam is going to be doing in 10 years, where, where, where he'll be, where, what he'll look like, um, you know, what's he going to be doing. It's just as ridiculous for me to try to do that than it is for me to tell you where MSLOC is going to be in 10 years, what we're going to be doing. Um, now, Liam is a middle child, and I'm a middle child, and any of you who are middle children, you know you're, you grow up with this constant awareness of what came before you and what came after you, right? <laughs> Constantly aware. I'm aware of what came before us in MSLOC and aware that there will probably be somebody after me, so I'm a middle child here as a director too, hopefully not too soon. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's just fascinating to think about all these things, and when you collect all of these images together and you see how much we've adapted to and, and adopted over these last 10 years, um, you know, it's, it's hard to think, could we have imagined this in 2002 and anticipated this as we were creating MSLOC? So, um, but you know, we, we've, we've adapted, and the, the thing here about, I think where we want to go with this is realizing that if we keep our eyes open and, and we're ready for that next big thing to come along, we're going to be ready. Now, of course, in MSLOC, we're engaged in strategic planning, right? We're trying not to imagine that step across the street, that direction. We're trying to think about our vision. And yes, for Liam, we have a college savings plan, and we are saving for him. And um, fortunately, we hope that in years from now, he'll be going off to school and doing all these wonderful things. But really, what I know about right now is he's good at sports, he's inquisitive, he's smart, he makes great relationships, great friendships. And knowing that, I'm confident that he's going to do well in life. And really knowing the intelligence, the passion for learning, the curiosity, uh, the strength of character of our students, our faculty, our, our alumni. I'm very confident that MSLOC is going to do very, very well into the future. So we can maybe speculate what things are going to be like in uh, a few years from now. Uh, but who knows what our classrooms are going to look like, who knows what our syllabi are going to look like, how we're going to learn. But what I can tell you with fairly good confidence is that what we appreciate most about MSLOC today will continue well into the future and continue to make us a strong program. Our focus on interdisciplinary curriculum, um, our one community that we try to embrace and its, its focus on um, innovation and design and openness to change, and our uh, embrace of adaptability and learning how to change and adapt. I think all of that will serve us very well um, into the future as it has already. And knowing that our industry is in great flux right now as well, um, you know, somewhere between organizational development, human resources, knowledge management, talent management, uh, learning sciences, and who knows what, all of these things are in transition. And we think we're well positioned to help define what that future of our field is going to be, and we'll inspire, aspire to do that with you as well. So um, pulling of all of this together then, um, I'm either quoting from a turtle in Kung Fu Panda or Eleanor Roosevelt, depending on which online source <laughs> you choose to believe. Um, and once again, uh, reinforcing my YouTube profile. But um, this is a great quote from, from uh, movies that we watched with the kids uh, not too long ago. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called present. And um, it's, a, it's a great line. And I would like to take that as part of our future focus message. If we can recognize that we're in the middle of something, all of these amazing transitions and changes in technology that's, that's coming at us, um, every day, and be focused and present around that, but also be ready and adaptable and apply what we've learned in MSLOC about learning and organizational change. If we can do that, we will be very well prepared to meet those mysteries that are going to come up on us tomorrow. 
So also recognizing that at MSLOC, we're in the middle of a huge transition too, right? We're also somewhere between our future and our current events of today that are gonna become history very quickly. And if we work with you and, and be present with you, you can also help us shape what that future of MSLOC will be like as well. So um, thank you for interrupting what you were in the middle of today to join us tonight and celebrate some of our history of MSLOC and help us launch our future because most certainly without you, there would not have been this wonderful celebration taking place. And in 10 years from now, you will have helped us create an amazing midpoint for our 20 year anniversary. So thank you very much.